This is our first ever holiday challenge. It is a contest to see who can do it all for the season. People will untangle a string of lights. They will sing a Christmas carol. Two eyes that made out of coal. Singing in the public is embarrassing, but whatever. Made out of snow, but all the children. They came to life one day. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat that found. When they placed it on his head, he became. He began to dance around. Frosty the snowman. Sign and seal five holiday cards. Nice music. I've looked it all up. And then wrap a gift. Having fun when it's after Thanksgiving and coming to Christmas. <laughs> if you love a good workout, Mercer loves you. It'll attack uh, uh, anyone. Until recently, MRSA or MRSA was pretty much confined to hospitals. With the growth of this resistant organism in the community, I think we're going to be seeing more and more of this, not less and less. MRSA lives on the skin and spreads in health clubs through dirty towels, filthy locker rooms, or sweat-drenched workout equipment. The problem is, over the past few years, MRSA has become resistant to antibiotics. Left untreated and allowed to enter the bloodstream, MRSA can kill. This bacteria is not only dangerous, it's extremely tricky as well. And as we move into the flu season, your risks are even greater. The flu can weaken your immune system, making you more susceptible to MRSA. That's why places like the Denver Athletic Club clean equipment on a regular basis to prevent the spread of bacteria. You can't uh, stand for a, a, a locker room that's not clean. You can't stand for a humid area like a wet room or a a spa area that's not disinfected regularly. The best prevention after a good workout? Take a good shower and practice smart personal hygiene. receive the body of our brother, Ronald, for burial. We have lost a great president, a great American, and a great man. And I have lost a dear friend. He possessed a rare and prized gift called leadership, that ineffable and magical quality that sets some men and women apart so that millions will follow them. As his vice president for eight years, I learned more from Ronald Reagan than from anyone I encountered in all my years of public life. We know, as he always said, that America's best days are ahead of us. But with Ronald Reagan's passing, some very fine days are behind us, and that is worth our tears. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. We needed help, and they weren't here to help us. Stay on the line. When you call 911, you expect to speak to somebody automatically. On Sunday, June 6th, cousins Renee and Stella needed emergency help. We could not get through to these people. We're crying out for help, and they did not come through for us. Seconds earlier, they discovered the bloodied and beaten body of their 25-year-old cousin, Demetria. We're in desperate need of help over here, and they put us on hold. In their time of need, instead of help, they heard this message. This is Denver 911. Stay on the line. And they heard it over and over again. This is Denver 911. Stay, stay on the line. As the minutes passed, the anger and frustration grew. Neighbors realized something was wrong and tried to help. 
I just heard screaming, and I heard somebody screaming, call 911. Krista Kaufman also called 911. I kept hearing somebody call 911, she's dead, she's dead, there's blood everywhere. And like the others, Krista's call went on hold and unanswered for several minutes. This is Denver 911. Stay on, stay on the line. Records obtained by 7 News expose a troubling reality inside Denver's emergency call center. The first call sat on hold for 3 minutes 15 seconds before answered by a 911 agent. The second call remained on hold for 4 minutes 20 seconds. The third call, 4 minutes 35 seconds. And the fourth call, 4 minutes 29 seconds. The message we've heard from the community is the police department failed that afternoon. Would you agree? No. I certainly do not agree with that. Why? We... <laughs> we responded in a reasonable amount of time. Police records show it took 14 minutes, 29 seconds from the time of the first call until an officer arrived to begin investigating the murder. No, we did not fail the public, or we did not fail the people that day. But the department admits it was one 911 agent short that day, and supervisors were unable to fill the position. DPD does blame impatient callers hanging up and redialing 911 for further delaying the officer's response. Maybe we are not doing a good enough job in educating the public on how to use 911. Although the department says this situation rarely happens, family and friends are not satisfied. That says to me that they don't care. So what's 911 for? And I certainly hope that Mayor Hickenlooper listens. This is Denver 911. It's a problem. It's a big problem. Stay on the line. You're calling 911 for a reason. <laughs> Obviously because you need help. And you're not getting them put on hold, they're put on hold. <laughs> the winning of this war is seen on the faces of people in Iraq who for the first time are beginning to experience what freedom really is. For the last three decades, these people have been Saddam Hussein brainwashed. I've been here for a while. I'm ready to get back to with my family. Death, injury, despair, dominant themes of war, and the recurring theme, which at times can distort our view of life in Iraq. We'll do what is necessary. We will spend what is necessary to achieve this essential victory in the war on terror. Now and for decades to come, Operation Iraqi Freedom will be laced with controversy. From the motivation behind that invasion to questions over who should rebuild. But one fact that remains unchallenged, Colorado is there. I live in Fountain, Colorado right now. I grew up in Denver, Colorado. I live at Fort Carson, Colorado. Colorado soldiers patrol the towns of Iraq, patrol its skies, and meet the enemy head on. If we make contact with the enemy tonight, make them regret it. Give them everything back we got. In the face of ever-present danger, they are also teachers. Your duty now is to protect the human rights of the people in your communities and to serve them. And liberators. It's a view inside Iraq few have seen. Out of death, new life. From injury to healing. And from despair to freedom. running a race, you know, when I get out there, it's, get a little butterflies, you know, you get, you get a little nervous, but once you play that first note, you're, you're off. I'll blow you some tubes, baby. My name is Kiowa, and I play the alto sax. 
How's it going, guys? I'm fundraising for college. Hi, how are you? I go to CU Boulder. CU, that's where my son graduated. Awesome. Yeah. Average hour, I'd say make $100. <laughs> it's really a blessing. Have a great one. Well, I'm Darren. Uh, I'm playing guitar here. He says he stole my idea, but that's great, you know? Rock and roll, man. <laughs> Get a few more people out here, we can, we can start a whole band. The uh, Starving Artist Corner, how about that? <laughs> Pretty good. Saw him last week here, too. That's nice. I'm going to have to do that. Thank you, sweetie. God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, have a great one. Thanks, bud. It kind of gives a boost of morale. You know, people say, hey, way to go. You know, keep it up. Hey, thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. Hi, thank you so much. I'm still kind of skeptical on people that stand on the corners. I really appreciate somebody actually doing something for a little bit of money. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, sweetie. God bless y'all. I make a, about the same in a three-hour shift out here as what I make in uh, a 12-hour day out, out of work. I've almost paid for the whole year of college this year. Right now, it's, it's a lot better than a real job. 